Hey, Richard Flett, and I want to thank you for joining us for uh, this podcast, uh, Art of Let's Talk Human Behavior. And today I want to focus on children. Uh, I think it's an issue that we don't talk enough about. Uh, the children of today will be our leaders of tomorrow. And I think we've got to get back to the place where we put some emphasis on children. And this morning I have invited to Let's Talk uh, a gentleman that I met several years ago, whose name is Oren Hudson, uh, lives in Atlanta. Oren, thank you so much uh, for taking time to join me this morning. Oh, Richard, you know, I fell in love with you the day we met and uh, I, you've, been, you've been a mentor and helping me. So I just thank God for people like you who've made a difference in my life. How did we meet? Uh, hmm. Was it on a flight, a Delta flight? I, I, think, I, we met, so. I think we met on a Delta flight. And uh, we've been friends ever since. But, you know, the turning point in my life is when you share with me, when you listen to the wrong people, you move in the wrong direction. And that has stuck with me for the last decade and has really made an impact on my life because you have to make sure the people you're following are qualified to lead you. So thank you. Yeah, so that little conversation on that brief Delta flight uh, started a sort of spurred your imagination and uh, strengthened your crusade? Yes, sir. I've helped over 75,000 kids. My goal is a million. And it's all, you know, to give out, you must first take in. And thank you for pouring in me so that I can share uh, stuff with others to help our young people be someone. So. With our audience, who is Orrin Hudson? Orrin Hudson is a former Alabama State Trooper, a Air Force veteran who's committed to teaching young people how to think. I started Be Someone because seven people were shot on a robbery for $2,000. And I said to myself, bad things happen when good people fail to take actions. But bad things happen when good people fail to make balls smooth. So I started Be Someone to empower our young people to choose peace instead of violence brains before bullets. Think it out, don't shoot it out. The only way to fight is to use your head. And that started the crusade of be something? Yeah, be someone. It started be someone. And I came up with the name be someone because Abraham Lincoln, his mother, her last words on the planet to Abraham Lincoln was be someone. And even, even though he had failed many times running for public office, he took those two words, be someone, all the way to the White House. So my assignment is to help our young people be someone. <laughs> and that, my friend, is such a powerful, powerful message, especially with uh, young people today. You have some information on your website, which is uh, besomeone.org, correct? Yes, sir, besomeone.org. You have some information on there that when I looked at it, I, it just amazed me, uh, made me lean back, made me think, and also made me sad. Uh, when you shared this, juvenile courts handle nearly 1.4 million delinquency cases per year. Amazing. And then the U.S. government spends more money on incarcerated people than on each child in the public school system. Mm -hmm. And then the U.S. locks up a larger sh uh, share of its youth population than any other developed country. And then the one that I think just really uh, opened my eyes because I know it's happening. After school activities for children are decreasing because of funding cutbacks. Orrin, what's happening to kids today? Well, I think we lost our way and I think we all are responsible to a point. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a lot of mental issues problems and then we have to be mindful what we say because a person who's having mental issues may act on something that you say. So we got to be mindful of what we say. We, got, we need all hands on deck. We need law enforcement to step their game up, parents, teachers, mental health professionals. If you see something, say something. There was a grandmother the other day who uh, acted because her grandson had bought all these guns and millions of dollars, I mean, uh, thousands of um, ammunition. And so she acted on it and reported it. And so she stopped, she saved a lot of lives. So a lot of times people see stuff, but they don't do anything about it. 
And so we got to find ways to educate our young people. Um, my, I have a formula that I use, and that formula is this. Every child is one caring adult away from being a success story. So we have to make sure that we're doing our Say that part. again, or Say that again. Every child is one caring adult away from being a success story. And so we all got to have our hands on deck. Now, I'm going to live an example. A white teacher in an all-black high school taught me chess, turned my whole mm -hmm. life around. And so I know what a caring adult can do for a child because I'm living proof. Tell us a little more about that. Well, his name was James Edge. I was about 15 years old. I was in and out of foster home and I was in this game. And basically what I was doing is just following the follower. They say, do this, you do it. They say, do this, you do it. So I was following the follower and the teacher said, Oren, I'm gonna teach you how to think for yourself. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm gonna teach you chess. I said, I'm a checker guru. He said, when you're playing chess, you're using every single square on the board. He said, checkers, you're using half of the board. He said, I'm gonna show you how to use every single square on this board. So it kind of it, it intrigued me. So I, I fell in love with chess and I'm living my dream because a teacher taught me how to think for myself. And wow. don't follow the fool. Don't follow the follower. Think for yourself, get your head in the game. Orrin, is a lot of what we're facing today with children, is this a parental issue? I, I, think, I think some of it is, some of it is, but I think we, you know, we need all hands on deck. Let me give you an example. You know, my mom did the best, my mom and my, my dad, they did the best they could. But sometimes you need someone else on the outside to help you. It's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame. So sometimes you need someone on the outside to help. And I think that's why everybody is important. That's why we need all hands on deck. Because, I mean, you 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 changed my life. Just, just you know, and just, just stand in contact with you and saying stuff and just pouring into people. and. Here's what I teach. What you sincerely desire for others will happen for you. And that's everybody have to have that mindset that when you serve and you create value for others, everyone wins. Well, I like the idea. I like the idea of all hands on deck. Uh, you know, I, when I was 16, my adopted parents gave me a suitcase and told me it was nice knowing me. Mm. I was left on a street corner uh, with a suitcase and not knowing what I was going to do. And from that point, not knowing what I was going to do, God put uh, three very powerful men in my life who put their hands on me, on my life. And they wouldn't let me wander off. They wouldn't let me stay in my world of depression. They, they hugged me with their presence. And because of them and their hands on my life, it's allowed me to move forward and to achieve many of the things that I achieved today. I think that every human is a living demonstration of their yesterday. Do you agree with that? Yes. yes. And you are too? Yes, sir. You know, I tell people all the time, I'm a work in progress, I'm constantly learning, I'm constantly trying to grow. I'm committed to serving others. My dream is to help a million children. I've trained about 75,000. So I have a long way to go. And I tell my students that school is never out for the pro. I, my formula is I'm in pre-K. And they say, coach, you were in pre-K 20 years ago. I'm never going to get out of pre-K because you never arrive and you always got to constantly uh, evolve and constantly grow. And, and uh, when you're green, you're growing. And uh, when you're not growing, you're dead. So we got to constantly grow and learn. Well, you use a very, very interesting format in order to reach into children's lives and have a presence. Because you know, one of my ultimate philosophies of life is to create a presence that has presence when you're not present. And one of the things I see in you is that through everything you do, you are establishing a presence that makes a difference in lives. And to do that, you use the game of chess. Now, why? Well, it saved my life. So I'm a product of a product. And chess is, teaches pattern recognition. Chess teaches problem solving. Chess teaches patience. Chess, te chess teaches focus. You know, 
focus means you stay with something to the end. Don't look to the left, don't look to the right, don't get distracted. Broken focus is the key to failure and laser focus is the key to success. And if you stay focused, you will win every time. So this has become your medium uh, to work with children. Yes, it, it's, uh, it's a board of education. Uh, it's back here in the back. I got a couple of boards there. Uh, it's the Board of Education because everything you need is within reach. Everything you need is on the board. But it's not where you line up, it's where you line up. The opposite of wealth is not poor. The opposite of wealth is mismanagement of resources. Poor is just a reflection of how you manage your resources. And chess, you have all the resources, but it's not what you have. Mike Tyson said, or tell people to learn from me. I said, what do you mean? He said, I've lost five, $400 million. Why? Mismanagement of resources. So having resources is not enough. You got to manage your resources. You got to say, well, is this true? Is this honest? Is this the best move I can make? Make every move your best move. Don't do the first thing that pops in your head. Your first crack could be a whack, and you can't take it back. So think before you act. So how do you do this? How do you use chess? What, what's the environment that you create this in? Do you go and do you play chess with kids? Yeah, I set up several chess boards and the kids get a prize that they beat me. And then I bring this life-size chess board in. And I just I play what if games. Hey, I, I made this move. Now watch this. This move has a hidden agenda. That's, I'm giving my queen away for free. If you take my queen, it's poison. Poison. Po that queen is poison. So if they take the queen, now the queen is the most powerful piece on the board. But if they take the queen, you lose. Because it's traps out there. So you got to set up booby traps. You got to set up trickery. You got to be able to recognize patterns. You got to be able to solve problems in real time. That's why you can make one move in life and never recover. So I teach them to pause, ponder, pray before you proceed, then you can prevail. Pause, ponder, pray, proceed, prevail. Can you give us some illustrations or stories about young people that you have watched as they've, they've bought into this and what it's done to their life? Well, I took a kid who almost went to jail for attempted murder on his own father. His father was in jail for many, many years. His father came home, they got in a fight, and he almost went to jail for the murder of his own father. And so the court gave him one more chance to get his right, uh, life correct. His name was Aaron Porter. I took Aaron Porter, worked with him, trained him, taught him how to think things through, showed him how to move the cursor of your mind to focus on what's good, what's positive, focus on the good things. And I, I worked with Aaron, and we were able to travel two or uh, two, three hours away to compete in a statewide chess competition. And we won that tournament because of him. So I teach, I'm teaching children how to dream, how to focus on the positive, how to do good, do no harm. Make sure every transaction you do provides value. Otherwise, it's a robbery. And so we're teaching children to be givers, not takers. Do you find that there are young people who look at what you're doing and think it's just crazy? Uh, maybe. Maybe a few do. But I think they're getting it because I lead by example. Like, for example, if I do an event and it's free food, free parking, free training, and they see I'm doing this, it kind of rubs off on them to go to see, wow, the power of giving. You know, what, I, what you sincerely desire for others what happened for you? So I'm teaching by example how to win the game. I'm teaching by example how to wake up winning. And they see the power of giving. Serve people. Ask them how can you help them? How can I create value for you? Because what you what you like I said earlier, what you sincerely desire for others, what happened for you? You got to give the get. But you got to give the give and then you get. Give the give. Don't give the get. Give the give and then you get. Well, one of the challenges we face today in our world is so many people give with the expectation of getting something back. That's not what it's about. Love means to give without expecting anything in return. The word love means to give without expecting anything in return. So what you got to do, just like you, our transaction, you've always added value with me without expecting it. And that's what life is about. I'm about serving other people because I know what I put out there comes come back 
and I'm not trying to get anything back. I just know I just like get I like making a I like helping other people. My personalized tag on my car say, "You win too." Why? Because when I win, you win, and when you win, I win. So we in this we in the same boat, and we all connected. Black, white, it doesn't matter. We all are connected. I love everyone. Orrin, what about this movement in our country today where um, everybody gets a trophy? Well, that, that, yeah, yeah, no, that has, well, no, it's, it goes like this. The Bible says, if you don't work, you shall not eat. Everything you get, you must earn. Cause and effect. You provide value, you show up, you do your absolute best in every transaction. Absolute best, absolute best, absolute best. Take, don't take the easy way out, you won't grow. Always arrive early, stay late, and do your absolute best in all transactions. And if you don't do your absolute best and you're not stepping up to your plate, then you don't deserve to get anything. I don't believe in this, everybody gets the trophy. No, nope. I believe that everything's got to be earned, and you earn by providing value. Hmm. I agree with you totally. I think uh, it's doing a great harm because we don't teach, we're not teaching people, especially young people, the power of failure that failure is simply an option that did not work uh, and my my bottom line definition of failure is that failure is fertilizer um, purpose of fertilizer is for things to grow so and i would imagine in your life you've been knocked down several times what I, tell, I, I tell my students i'm the king of failure i've lost I mean, I'm probably in a Guinness Book of World Record. I, I better can look and see. I'm pretty sure I've lost more chess games than anyone in the world. <laughs> anyone in the world. And I'm the king of failure. And I, I love it because failure makes you better. Failure is, failure is feedback. Failure is fuel. The, smart, the more you fail, the smarter you get. I'm the king of failure. I love it. Because failure makes you better. And uh, there's no such thing as failure. It's only information. And information gives you information for the next time. And so you either, you either win or you learn. So either way, you win. You win, too. So yeah, failure, uh, is your, failure is your friend. Yeah, I like, the, I like your statement. You either win or you learn. You know, yeah. that. Either so, way. And, and, and knowledge, knowledge is power. <laughs> and so... Failure is nothing but knowledge. It's a, you know, and so you learn from every experience you make. So there's no such thing as failure. It's only information. Yeah. And information is what you want. You, you know, data. Everything is about data. And the more data that you acquire, the, the more smarter you are. And so uh, every master was once a disaster, and your mind is a pearl. You can change the world. You have everything you need to win the game. You have your mind. You have your ability. You have your talents and you have time. The purpose of your life is to use what you have because having is not enough. You got to apply and use. To know is not enough, you got to apply. So to have is not, you got, have is not enough and to know, you got to apply and use. That's the key to success in all fields. Well, you know, through my experience as a child, Oren, uh, I grew to understand, and it was a big lesson, that the foundation for improvement and growth in your life is your foundation of belief in yourself, trust in yourself, and the faith that I can, I will do it. Is that part of what you instill within uh, the young people you work with? Yes, sir. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's you spot on because you got to believe in yourself and you got to trust in yourself and you got to know that your mind is a pearl, you can change the world. You can do this, you can do it here, and you can do it now. No one's better than you, and you're no better than anyone else. And you got to treat everyone you meet like the most important person in the world. When I was a state trooper, I had the blue light, the badge, the bulletproof vest, but everybody I stopped, I treat them like the most important person in the world. Why? Because that person is me. And what you sincerely desire for others will happen for you. I'm, I'm gonna treat you like, you like you're me because we all are connected. You know, one of the other things I find missing in our world today, in our society, in our country, is that we've lost sight of the power of a hug. Everybody needs mental hugs. Everybody needs emotional hugs. And yes, 
We need physical hugs. And so many times today, the cry of people is for a hug. Uh, do you find that in the kids that you work with? Yeah, and I think so. I think everybody has a sign above their head and it said, appreciate me. And I think we need 12 hugs a day for survival. They say 12 hugs a day, you gotta get 12 hugs in. Give me a hug. Ooh. So we need these hugs because hugs are better than drugs. And I think a lot of time, that's why I say every every child is one caring adult away from being a sex. So I think adults need to just say, you look, give me, give me a hug. You know, what's going on with you today? How can I make your life better? You know, I think we gotta connect. I think we lost this connectivity. And sometimes people will, will go off and make bad decisions. There was a man about to, uh, this lady was at the bus station and this man came up. She was about uh, four feet tall. He was about six, three. And he stood up and he uh, started, and she said, sir, will you stand by me? And he stood by her and he started crying. She said, he said, he said, why? She said, why are you crying? He said, I was going to rape you. But when you asked me to stand by you, I couldn't do it. <laughs> she appreciated him and it turned the script. So a lot of times people just need to be appreciated. Well, I believe the number one thing that a human life wants to know is that they matter. And I think so many people walk around when they don't have that strong foundation of belief, trust, and faith in their self, and they make their self vulnerable to people who see or sense that, and then they use them. Yep, and I think, and I think that's why I love what you said. You know, we got to give without expecting anything in return. We got to give with the fact of just loving on people because whatever you do for others will, will trickle back to you. We got to know that we all are connected. Well, what's the future? What are you looking, what are you looking the future for? Be someone, I'm, I'm asking people to join me in my efforts to help a million children. I've helped over 70,000 kids. My goal is a million. And we need all hands on deck. And uh, you could be a part of changing the world. My dream is to go in every city uh, at least 50 states and share the um, Orrin Hudson formula by teaching people you got to give to get and that sacrifices must be made in order to have a breakthrough. Progress is impossible unless you do something different. And oftentimes to win a game, you have to do what we call an unfair exchange. It looks like an unfair exchange, but when you give, it comes back. I beat one of the top Russian grandmasters in the world. His name is Rashid Ziethanov. And in the game, I was able to beat him because of one thing. I did what we call an unfair exchange. I sacrificed a rook for a pawn. It's my book. It's in this book what I did. But I, I played this top Russian grandmaster. And his name is Rashid. And, he's a, and at this time, he had won more tournaments in the United States than anyone. He was very, very good. I mean, he, I've seen this guy beat people. A, he'll take a rook off the board and just destroy people. And I've seen this with my own eyes. I've seen him read papers and destroy people while he's playing them, but he's real good. But I was able to beat him because I sacrificed. And and I tell people I, I'm the king of failure. I, I, and this guy beat me a lot of times, but you never give up. It's not over until I win. And that's what you got to do. You got to have this mindset that never give up. Persistence will beat anything. And if you persist, you will persist until you win. You never give up. You stand the game. Be someone. Oh. I got a question for you. I want to back up a little bit. Have you ever let a child win a game when you knew you could beat them? No, I don't roll like that. Everything must be earned. In fact, the kids get a thousand dollars if they beat me, so I can't. I can't let them win. <laughs> yeah. They get paid if they beat me. Yeah. So that's part of the motivation. I went to this school and I said, "Let's play chess." I said, "No." I said, "Who wants a thousand dollars?" I said, "Everybody, said, let's go." They beat me. So that's how I got them involved. So I got them hooked by they trying to win. And they tried to double team me and they coach, I'm gonna beat you in the morning. One of my students said, Coach, I'm in college and I can beat you. I said, I'm in pre-K. He said, Coach, you were in pre-K 20 years ago. But I, I was able to hold him off because I, I loved chess because chess is a great equalizer. You have everything you need. So it's not like cards. Cards, I couldn't do that because I may not get the right hand. But chess, you have you're born with everything you need to win the game. So it's no blame in this game. It's only aim. No blame is only aim. Don't play the blame game. Play the win. Now, one, of the, one of the things that I see, too, as I travel this world, 
is that so many people have lost the ability to think. M most people don't think they think they think. So if I do not think, I turn my emotions loose. And one of the things I know about chess, I've played, I'm not real good at it, but you gotta think. And you can't just think the now, you gotta think the move ahead. Right, and you gotta say, wait a minute, can I take that free piece? Or is that a trap? You know, you gotta think it through. You gotta, and then you gotta think about the consequences. Like I was playing this guy, and he had calculated that if I take all three of his pieces, he would win, and that was true. So I only took two of them and left the third one stay and won the game. So you got to think it through. He said, well, damn, if he take them three pieces or and lose. And that was true. So I took the two, left the third one there, and I was. <laughs> yeah, you got to think it through. Think it through to the end. Six magic words. Take time to think things through. Say that again. Take time to think through things through do you think that's a natural behavior or is that something we have to learn and practice that's what we have to do constantly every day you know because you have to read the fine print i, I rented a car for a friend of mine she said or it's only eight dollars a day i said okay i'll do it by the time they got through with all the fine print it was a hundred dollars a day <laughs> i was like what yeah when we turned it in it was like a hundred and something dollars it was like a dollar for every mile it was like so yeah, you got to read, you got to think it through. You got to look and say, wait a minute, you know, what, what's the bottom line? You know, what am I missing? You know, uh, is this guy, why is he giving me this for free? And, and why is this quarterback looking only to the left? If he's looking only to the left, he's trying to freeze the safety. And so you got to say, wait a minute, he maybe go to the right because he's looking to the left. So you got to be able to, you got to have discernment so you can read what's really, really happening. I want people to really understand something. And I want to go back for just a second. You've chosen the game of chess as your avenue to reach people, the young people. And it's something that uh, you're, you're good at. It's a talent that God has given you that you are using. Go back so that we don't miss this. What are some of the major lessons that chess would teach a young person that would help them improve their life? Pattern recognition. Explain Pattern. that. Pattern recognition is the key to success in all fields. Once you know the pattern, you can plan, you can prepare, you can position, you can predict. Once you know the pattern, you know two, four, six, eight. Once you know the pattern, three American Express, four Visa, five MasterCard, six Discover. Once you know the pattern, you know that you're a Delta uh, Gold, you're going to have, uh, uh, and if you're a Delta Diamond, you like you are, you're going to have all these amenities. Once you know the pattern, you know what's coming next. Positioning is everything. And so if you can position yourself to win, that's how you win the game. And chess teaches you patterns. I played 59 people the other day simultaneously in chess. Why? I look at the board, I see the pattern, I make a move. I look at the board, I see the pattern, I make a move. This game is over because of the pattern. I know what's coming next. Two, four, six, eight. Three, American Express, four, V, the five, I start. Certain time, traffic bags up. Certain time, there's no traffic. And so you got to know the pattern. At a certain time, it gets dark. Certain time is not is light. So once you know the pattern, you know how to position yourself so that you come out a champion. Well, let me ask you a question here. Are you saying that most people are predictable? Yes. And crime is a predictable too. So the pattern that I teach people is how to wake up winning is if you, the person who outgives the competition beats the competition. Be a giver. Serve people. Give unfair exchanges because you're going to win in the end. I'm going to, all transactions that I do, I give people more value than they give me. I'm going to arrive early, I'm going to stay late, and I'm going to do more than everybody else. Everybody. Because everything is in my job description. If someone hired me to do something, everything is in my job description. I'm going to provide so much value that if you hit the lottery, I'm going to be the first person you call. So let me take this a, a, a step deeper. Is a lot of what you do in working with people, the young people, is this to help them let go of their, um, their emotional upbringing or their emotional lacking and teach them to think and create a clear picture for their life of what they can become? Exactly. And that no one's better than you. 
and that you win or lose. Hang on, say that again. No one's better than you, and you know better than anyone else. So here's what we teach: decisions plus discipline equals dominion. Decision minus discipline is disaster. You got to control your emotions. You can't do it. Someone hit you. We ain't hitting back. Referee call me the N word. I ain't hitting. I ain't gonna say nothing back to that referee. I'm gonna smile at all. Decisions plus discipline equals dominion. Decisions minus discipline is disaster. Now that's that's powerful, Orin. That's powerful. Um, because every day of life is about choices. Every morning when you and I get up, the slate for that day is clean. And I get out my chalk and throughout the day, I write on that slate what that day is gonna be. And I can either be a person who responds or reacts. And I think when you're living from your emotions up, you're reacting, you're not responding. If when you, you, you cut me off, yeah, if, you, if I'm driving, you cut me off, I'm smiling at all. Because I have the pen in my hand to write my script of my life. Don't give the don't get don't have your life story put in the pen of someone else. Put keep the pen in your and, and think means think means true. Uh, T stands for to be, is this true? Is this honest? I stand for is it inspiring? And N stands for is it necessary? And and K stands for is it kind? If it ain't all those, you ain't we ain't doing none of that. People will tell you, people will give you bad advice. That's why I love what you told me. When you listen to the wrong people, you move in the wrong direction. People will give you bad advice. People will tell you, let's kill Moses. We ain't killing Moses. They go, well, we will find building bricks, the Red Sea coming. Let's kill Moses. No, we ain't doing none of that. <laughs> yeah, I think that when you lack that belief, the trust, and the faith in yourself, you open yourself to become an actor in someone else's play. And you give up the main thing that God gave us, and that's our individuality. Uh, my, my number one philosophy for my life is why spend my energy being a carbon copy when I'm the original? Exactly. Because it takes the same amount of energy. And you can't, you know, there's never, uh, as always, um, there's no replacement for you. Just be you. And everybody was born to be a star at something. The purpose of your life is discovery. You know, you discover through trial and error. Make it okay to fail. Every master was once a disaster. You will fall. You know, the Bible says fall down. A good person falls down seven times. Get back up eight. Get back up, up eight. Stay in the game. Don't give up. You know, it's not over until you win. Stay with it. Let me see if this has ever been true about you. You know, I've been living on the road 200 plus days a year for 34 years. And travel today is not what it used to be. Uh, it's exhausting. And people today take a lot out of us, you know, because I think a lot of people today are really seeking and crying for help. And to find someone who really, they feel really cares about me, it's not about what's in this for them, but they really care about my life. And there are times, Oren, when I've been scooting across the sky and I'm exhausted, uh, my day ended late, I got on an airplane, my day's gonna begin early the next day, and I sat there and I think, why are you doing this? Why are you willing to commit yourself to this? And then I, I realized that the, God, the gift that God has given me is the gift to help people see beyond their pain and their struggles. And it's not about giving people answers. It's about asking the right questions that help them. Have you gone through a time since you've been doing this where you wondered, why am I doing this? Not really, because I, I know why I'm doing it, you know, and powerful people ask powerful questions. Questions your focus, and, and in this world, you only get what you focus on. So questions are very powerful. And oftentimes, I ask people questions. I say, uh, you know, because when you ask the question, then they, they know the answer oftentimes. So I have people tell me what's going on on their own by asking the right question, you know. Uh, and I love what you said, you know, questions are very powerful. So powerful people ask powerful questions, questions still focus. And in this world and in business and in life, you only get what you focus on. So if people wanted to learn more about you and about uh, being someone. Be someone. Yeah, be someone. How do they find out about you? Where, where can they go? 
Well, my website is bsomeone.org. I'm on Facebook or in Checkmate Hudson. And I have a Twitter account, bsomeone.org. So I'm just a foot soldier fighting ignorance. And I'm committed to teaching young people how to choose peace instead of violence, how to put brains before bullets, get your head up, get your pants up, get your grades up. And the big one, never give up. And what about if someone is interested in getting a copy of your book? How do they get you, how would they get a copy of your book? The best way to, the best way to get a copy of this book is be someone.org. And our autograph is sending you a copy of this book. It's uh, one move at a time, how to win a chess in life. And Jack Canfield wrote the forward for my book. An interesting story, he told me that he could beat me in chess. And I said, Jack, if I beat you, will you write the forward for my book? He said, well, I don't have time, but if you beat me, I'll write it. So I was able to uh, beat Jack, and uh, he wrote the forward for my book. Yeah, I know Jack. He's a, he's a great guy. Um, so Jack, if, Jack if, you, if you could leave the people that are listening to this with one message, you know, uh, that is across, across the, the, the divide, whether I'm an adult or a child, if there was one message that you would want people to remember about you, and your crusade and the stage that you had, what would that one message be? A full-time soldier sleeps with his boots on. I'm committed to helping the young people and it's not about me, it's about we and it takes teamwork to make the dream work. So join me in my efforts. You could be a part of changing the world one move at a time because I'm committed to helping young people think strategically about their futures and be givers, not takers. Yeah. So again, if uh, your, your website is besomeone.org, if people wanted to reach out to you, uh, your email is oren at besomeone.org. Yep, two yeah. R's in my name, O-double-R-I-N at besomeone.org. Okay. Listen, you have no idea how much I appreciate this and appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to talk with me. The children of this nation are the future. And when I go back and I read these statistics that are on your website, 1.4 million delinquency cases per year. I mean, that should break our heart uh, when you realize that the, our government spends more money on incarcerated people than they, they do on each child in the public school system. There's something wrong with that. It, it just seems like that we're not addressing the real issue. I don't believe in problems, but I do believe in issues. And that our focus needs to come back to the future. And the future begins with dealing with the now. So with someone like you, and you have no idea my respect for you and, and what you're doing and the investment you're making in the lives of young people just through a simple, complicated game like chess. <laughs> and I appreciate you. And I hope that the people that listen uh, to this will reach out to you because there are ways they can help you also, right? Yeah, because we're playing the game without pieces. Uh, we really need more people to join us. We need volunteers. We need, uh, we need donors. We need sponsors. We need, their, we need their thinking. We need their treasure. We need their talents. We need their tools. And we need that time. So you could be a part of supporting the efforts because we depend on people like you to keep this program going. So we are nonprofit 501c3, and I have a long way to go. Well, uh, I support you. I believe in you. I respect you. I appreciate you. And I'm a person who believes that no one crosses your path by accident. And that time on that Delta jet, uh, where we had just a few moments to talk. Uh, I knew at that time that you were not in my life by accident. And what I look for is I look for the connection with people. And the stronger the connection, the greater the lessons. The greater the lessons, the more the growth. The more the growth, the more we can spread the value of who we are to other people. So again, thank you very, very much for spending this time with me. Well, Richard, I just thank God for you. You have really been a, a it's not a day that don't, don't go by. I don't think about what you said because it applies in all type of areas of your life. And if you listen to the wrong people, that's what the problem is. Our children, the children are walking around with their pants sagging because they listen to the wrong people. 
and it's conformity, acting like everybody else without knowing why, without knowing where. So I honor you for, for, for throwing that light bulb on in my head and just being there for me. And I thank God for me. Well, again, be someone.org. Check him out. Uh, what he's doing is worth you paying attention to.